Hello, and welcome back to the Carbon Capture Magazine podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Pikarski, and today we are joined by Nick Lowe, Principal Drilling Engineer at Elemental Energies. Nick, thank you so much for joining us today, and welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Let's start by having you share about yourself, your background, and a little bit about Elemental Energies as a company. Yes. Again, thanks for having me. And yes, my background is in chemical engineering. I'm a chartered member and fellow of the ICME. I've got uh, 35 years experience, primarily in the upstream oil and gas sector, and more recently working on projects supporting the energy transition, CCS, CCUS, geothermal. But in fact, CCS and CCUS has had a lot of focus in the recent years, And it's a domain area I've interfaced with throughout my entire career, or at least components of the overall CCS supply chain. You know, at the start of my career, I was involved in the optimization of upstream processes of the removal of the acid gases from petroleum fuel stock in a shell refinery in Australia. Then in the well services sector, I've worked in the SLB product development center in France at the time when the initial CO2 resistant cement development work was kicking off with the view of the correct sort of well barriers for these types of wells. And then at about the 20-year mark, I moved into well engineering and wells project management and joined Elemental Energies, or Synergy Wells at the time. And I'm currently a principal drilling engineer with them. Amongst my initial projects, possibly given my background in chemical engineering, we're providing the wells input for feed for the first UK offshore salt cavern gas storage project and then quickly followed on it as job wells advisor for the conceptual stage of the white rose ccs project one of the two candidate uk projects back in 2011 and 2012. unfortunately that project came to a halt you know as the uk government funding was halted but in the interim i still got roped into other ccs ccs projects or suitability assessments at least, covering the UK East Irish Sea and also projects in Indonesia. And then uh, more recently, just in the last 18 months, beginning to a little bit more detail later in this podcast, I've been assisting with the Green Sands project in Denmark for INEOS. In terms of elemental energies, it's a fusion of two well-known well engineering firms, Synergy Wells and Norwell been formed in the last 12 to 18 months. Basically, their focus is in three principal areas, the low carbon and energy transition area, CCS, CCUS and geothermal, the decommissioning area, you know, how do we look after removing the uh, aging well stock that is no longer on production. And there's still a piece for the conventional oil and gas. And, you know, we're providing a responsible approach to new oil and gas field development. So that's sort of the balanced portfolio that we're providing at the moment from Elemental Energies. So you certainly have a lot of experience across all aspects of the industry. Can you speak briefly about the importance of carbon capture and storage to both Elemental Energies as a company, but also just to the broader energy sector and net zero transition? Sure. You know, it's clear that the oil and gas industry is changing as the world endeavours to transition to a greener future. I think the big debate is over how we get there. Turning off the oil and gas industry overnight is not the answer. The industry provides more than just fuel for heating and transportation. The oil and gas industry provides feedstock for the chemical industry. Energy security is another consideration as the oil and gas industry can accommodate or complement the intermittency problems associated with renewables at the moment. So how can we maintain a right-sized oil and gas industry for these minimum needs and proactively reduce the carbon footprint at the same time? This is where CCS and CCUS comes into play. Now, if we ignore the oil and gas industry, energy industry for a minute, and look at the construction or cement and concrete industry, CO2 is unfortunately a byproduct of the production of concrete and cement. Now, 
the construction industry is independently working on ways to reduce the CO2 emissions. They are far from reducing them completely. Hence, CCS can also step in and assist with sequestrating their excess CO2. So CCS is core to the elemental energies portfolio and strategy to position itself within the industry as the world finds its path to a managed greener future while ensuring energy security. I like to think of it as the elemental energies portfolio addresses the yesterday, today and tomorrow of the energy transmission. Decommissioning to reduce the aging well stock, responsible EMP to complement the advanced renewables without compromise to the security of supply, and CCS to assist with CO2 sequestration moving forward. So as an independent world's expert, Elemental Energies understands what it takes to deliver complex projects across the energy mix. And by applying our deep and practical experience of delivering complex international drilling programs, I think we can provide a complete engineering solution to decommissioning oil and gas carbon capture and geothermal projects. Okay, so what are some of the key well management, engineering, and wider challenges that come with sequestration and sealing millions, maybe even billions of tons of CO2 underground? I think the biggest challenge is it's storage for life forever. The industry as itself, oil and gas, has, you know, since 2017, had more of a well life cycle hat that they've been wearing. And this has also been followed up with local guidelines, industry guidelines, in that whatever you do, you need to be mindful of the repercussions in the future phases of your wells. All these principles apply with CCS. We have experience of reusing depleted reservoirs for conventional gas storage. So we've got the bits and pieces to put together. I think the real challenge is handling the CO2. The operating pressure and temperature and presence or not of water, formation water, all require close assessment and understanding throughout the life of the project, as these provide additional potential risks to good storage over the lifetime. The complexities of CO2 and CO2 reinjection, however, are not new to the industry. There are past projects in Algeria, Norway, just suggest a couple, where CO2 is part of the ongoing production stream and they are stripped out and then re-injected at site. The difference now is scaling this process up to be able to re-inject industrially produced CO2 or extracted waste CO2. But this brings an added complexity with regard to managing the impurities in the CO2 waste stream and to avoid compromising you know, any barriers currently in the well. So hence, there's also been a, there's a lot of work ongoing at the moment in coming up with an agreed industry set of uh, specifications of a suitable CO2 quality before injecting it into CCS storage. Another complexity is the initial assessment of the liability posed by any existing wells penetrating the proposed storage formation whether these are still on production, suspended, or abandoned. Depending upon the age of the wells, they most likely were not designed with the view of CO2 storage in later life. Hence, this requires a, an additional sort of extensive review of the well's history, barrier location, composition and verification method, and then assess if it's fit for purpose for the planned CCS project going forward. Even previously abandoned wells and well wells cannot be overlooked. And with it, unfortunately, comes complexities of how are we going to access and re-enter these wells to install CCS compliant barriers if they deem not fit for purpose. And of course, ensuring uh, security over the lifetime of the project, you know, you've got to consider monitoring options. Potentially you might have to do interventions on these wells. And then Perhaps there's also the eventual abandonment of these injector wells. So all of these are additional sort of challenges, you know, faced with the industry at the moment. 
So you touched on um, some steps and some considerations to take in. Could you tell us more about certain solutions available to solve the complex problems needed to unlock the full potential of carbon capture and storage? Yes. Again, it's just going to the toolbox and pulling together the pieces of the puzzle to help solve the issues together. And I think, you know, initially, you know, we need to review the the current status of the wells and the field and the potential liabilities they pose. And equally, you know, this is not work that's done by wells folk in isolation. I think uh, what's really important here is the joined up efforts between and collaboration with subsurface, the formation experts, the reservoir engineering experts of who will be modeling the progression of the CO2 plume as it's injected into the reservoir. There's also a piece on flow assurance. Again, the CO2 has some interesting physical behavior and it's key during the uh, injection process that we manage and keep it in the dense phase that takes a lot of modeling and when you start talking about potential interventions this all needs to be modeled and risk assessed and you know with it comes um, looking at new you know well barrier materials that are suitable for these types of wells and that in itself is ongoing engineering work at the moment All right. So earlier you had mentioned Project Greensand. I wanted to circle back to that. Can you speak about your recent work on the groundbreaking Project Greensand in Denmark? And feel free to touch on any other notable projects that are in development. Yes, the Greensands project, a lot of information has been out there in the press of recent talking about the initial phase and trials. Well, that initial phase is the the proof of concept. You know, it's a pilot scale, and INEOS have injected at the Nini field last year some CO2. The CO2 was captured in Belgium and injected beneath the seabed in the Danish North Sea. And this is the first time cross-border offshore CO2 storage, you know, has been undertaken. Our involvement with the project is the next phase, the second phase, looking at how to scale up operations in utilizing the the full ninny field going forward so it's basically working through the steps we've sort of discussed earlier here today starting with an assessment of the well integrity status of the complete ninny well stock and then we've commenced the conceptual well engineering work required to repurpose the ninny field and this is sort of on a well by well basis looking at three potential options you know, either complete well abandonment, partial abandonment, and then potential well conversion to reutilize it as a CN2 injector, or partial abandonment, potential well conversion to utilize it to help with, you know, monitoring as we go forward during the life of the field. The bulk of the initial work was making a thorough assessment of the existing well stock documenting the world's history, in particular identifying the existing wall barriers, their composition and what verification had been performed. Then this was assessed against the planned field-wide CO2 injection to determine the required work scope for either abandoning the wells or, where assessed feasible, the repurposing of CO2 injectors and or monitoring wells. Ever mindful of the well life cycle, well integrity approach, all future phases potential well interventions and eventual well abandonment are considered in determining the optimal design and necessary well barriers and suitable barrier materials. Unlike earlier projects, the unique feature of green sands was the concept of delivery of the CO2 in tanks to the platform and consequently injecting the CO2 in batches. Most of the earlier projects were designed on the premise of a continuous CO2 injection with the CO2 pipe from shore to the platform. This batch injection of CO2 has brought several new challenges, notably managing repeated startup and shutdowns, given the interesting phase behavior of CO2. 
Lastly, I just wanted to ask what the role of crossover skills from oil and gas and other offshore sectors is in delivering carbon capture and storage projects. Yes, heard that from the, this talk so far. You know, the similar principles of well integrity management, verification of the well barriers are required. But this time we're looking not only for pressure, but its compatibility with CO2 feedstock. And the extra level of detail here is, you know, obviously the chemical and physical nature of CO2 that brings with it a high level of complexity. But maybe this is not uncommon for us in the oil and gas industry when you think that over the years we've taken on gas storage, HPHT, deep water wells, each has its own challenges, but the devil each time is in the detail and, and working through the engineering. So perhaps CCS and CCUS is the next challenge. The skills are there in the oil and gas industry. And as I mentioned earlier, the success is not just from the well engineering folk, but it's also in collaboration with the subsurface, reservoir engineering for the plume modeling, flow assurance, feedstock QAQC. Uh, collaboratively, we need to work to get the final solutions in place. Absolutely. Again, we are joined by Nick Lowe, Principal Drilling Engineer at Elemental Energies. Nick, thank you again for joining us. Did you have anything else you would like to add? No, but thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Nick. And thank you to our listeners. If you or your company is interested in recording a podcast, please reach out. For more podcasts like this, visit carboncapturemagazine.com and subscribe for industry news. We hope that you enjoyed this podcast and look forward to next time. Until then.